Welcome to lesson 1.8, unit one. And this is part one. I'm gonna do this in, in different parts. Um, so the first thing is that we're going to go through and create a um, simple user interface. And let's say that I'm here at my screen and the first thing I wanna do is I wanna open Xcode. If I don't have Xcode pinned down here, I'm going to go to my search. So if you're new to Apple products and you want to find your Xcode or whatever um, application you want to use, then you type the name of it, you search for it, and it will come up with what you've used slightly. So when you find this code, you open it. And if you follow lesson 1.8, it tells you that you're going to create an Xcode project. Here is Playground, so I don't want to use Playground. I don't want to clone an existing project. I want to create a new Xcode project. And then here we're going to use a single view app. That's what I want to choose. And then it gives you um, a name to give your application and you can give it any name I'm actually I'm actually following a different script than the one in your book so um, which is created by Apple which um, it's also created by Apple but I think it's a little bit better so on this one we're actually going to call this application just an example food tracker um, for the team here, you're going to leave this blank. And hold on, I think I might be getting ahead of myself here. Let me just take a look. Create a new project. Um, single view. Okay. Uh, so for the product name, Xcode, just to let you know, uses the product name you entered to name your project and the application also. So if your app is called, you know, let's just say we're creating the Waze app, then you the product name there would be Waze. And I'm just gonna use um, just any application that you may use. I don't know if you guys use Waze, but you know, let's think of Instagram. A lot of people know what that is, sort of um, a Facebook app. That would be the name that you have on there. Um, team is going to be automatically filled in if you work for um, a certain company. If not, we're just going to leave it blank. The organization name, this is going to be your own name or you can leave it blank if you want to leave it blank. The organization identifier, um, if you have one, if you don't, you can put com.example. And then the bundle identifier will automatically be created depending on your organization identifier and the name of your product name. So this is the bundle identifier right there. And then we have language is Swift. Uh, we want uh, let's see. We want to select, we can go ahead and leave those two selected for now. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and click next. Hmm. I want this. Next. Okay, and then on here we just want to um, tell her where to where to actually put our new project. So your project's going to be a folder, and you can save it. I would probably, um, if I were you, create a folder where I keep all my projects. But right now it's saved under desktop. 
and then you can choose do you want it under documents downloads do you want to put it on the desktop and then right now I have a lessons folder teacher resources student resources um, do I want to create a new folder okay so right now I'm just going to create it on my desktop I can move it later okay so here it says Esco2 would like to access your contacts I compare your contacts with source control, users, blah, blah, blah. You can allow this or not. Does it doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, notice here that says <coughs> signing for food tracker requires a development team. This warning, this warning means that you haven't set up Xcode for iOS development, but you don't have to do that right now. You basically don't need a development team to run the app in the simulator. But before you can run the app on an old iOS device, you do have to set a valid team so that the app can be signed. So if you're in an individual or part of an organization, that's going to be um, like if you're part of a Apple developer program, you can select the team here. Otherwise, your Apple ID, like if you're just creating this for yourself, your Apple ID is assigned to a personal team that you can use to launch apps on devices. You will need to join the Apple Developer Program before you can actually submit your app to the App Store. So if you have an Apple ID, um, you, can hit, you can go ahead and set that if you want. You go under Add Account, you enter your Apple ID and password, or you can leave it blank. Everything will run fine. But at some point, let's say that you've created your app and it's all complete, and you want to test your app on your own iPhone or your own iPad, you will need to actually add the Apple ID. And it's really easy to create your Apple ID. Uh, it's free. So um, we can do that later, and your book will show you how to do that later. Okay, let's see what else we have here. Um, we want to always make sure that we have a version. So this is version 1.0. So every time that um, you make changes to your app, you add features, or you fix any bugs, um, you would change the version of your, of your application. Okay, let's see what else. Development info. Um, on devices here, you want to keep it universal. So you don't want to say, I just want it for the iPad or the iPhone, unless you actually just want it for one of those. So we'll keep it universal. You can run in either one. Okay. Um, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to look at the code. And we looked at this before, but we're, um, we're going to look at it again. Before I do that, I just want to review a few things. Remember, um, this up here where you have your run button and all this, we call that our toolbar. On the right-hand ha right side, we have the utility area. Left-hand side, we have the navigator area. And in the middle here, we have our editor area where we can edit our code or information about our app. Okay, right now don't worry about if you don't understand all the different areas or what's in them. Just remember you have the editor in the middle and your navigator is on the left. Uh, those are very important right now. Okay, 
So let's just, um, right now, because you based your project on an S code template, the basic app environment is automatically set up for you. Even though you haven't written any code, you can build and run a single view application template without any additional configuration. So you're going to build and run your app using the iOS simulator that's included with S code. And remember we do that by clicking the play button or going to product and run. Um, remember that the simulator can model a number of different types of hardware, all the screen sizes and resolutions for both iPad and iPhone, so you can simulate your app on every device that you're developing for. Um, in this example, I'm going to pick iPhone 7 option. So here I'll just pick um, iPhone 7. To run your app in the simulator, we choose iPhone 7 option. Sorry, I'm trying to make sure that I go through all the steps um, and I don't miss anything. I don't show you anything. Miss anything that I want to show you? Okay, we're going to clean the. We're going to click the run button here. Notice here is telling us it's it's building it, it's waiting, it's launching food tracker. So this is a status activity viewer. Tell us what's going on. And it's going to take a little a few minutes, not a few minutes, but a few seconds. Hopefully not a few minutes. If you're doing this for the first time, which you guys aren't, it would ask you to enable developer mode on this Mac. Um, if it is the first time that you're doing it, go ahead and say enable developer mode. But it's not the first time for me to do it, so it shouldn't ask me. Okay, so still saying launching food tracker. So we want to keep, you always want to keep your eye on this. This is going to give you the status and you'll know what's going on. So it says attaching to food tracker on iPhone 7. Okay, so the simulator has started. The simulator opens in the iPhone mode that you specified and then launches your app. Initially, the simulator is going to display your app's launch screen and then it transitions to your app's main interface. This is the main interface. And of course, we have nothing, um, just a blank screen because we haven't added anything to it. Okay. And then if I bring it down here, it tells me that it's running my app. So there it is. And right now, if you look on the left-hand side, you notice that you're running the simulator. You're not in X, you're not running Xcode, you're running the simulator. So if you're done looking at it and you, you want to exit, you would click on simulator and you would quit, quit the simulator. Okay. Now we're going to look at the source code and talk about the source code. So the single view application template that we chose comes with a few source code files that set up the app environment. First, we're going to look at Apple Delegate Swift file. So I'm going to click on Apple Delegate here on the left hand side. Again, if you don't see, if you don't see the the file tree, you're going to click on, you're going to click up here on these little buttons. So let's say that I'm here, maybe that's what I'm seeing. I want to see 
all my folders and files and I'm going to click on Apple Delegate Swift. Okay. Um, so that's my project navigator. So as soon as I, I click that, I'm seeing here my source file. So anything that ends in .swift is going to be what we call the source file. Source meaning our code, the, the, the code that we, or in this case, that uh, has been provided for you. Okay, so let's take a look at the primary functions of Apple Delegate.Swift. There are two primary functions. One is to define your Apple Delegate class. So the App Delegate creates the window where your app's content is drawn and provides a place to respond to state transitions within the app. So Basically that the white screen that you saw, that is what that's saying. It creates that. And it also allows uh, for the responding of transitions within the app, like you can transition to, to the back, um, you can be active, things like that. It creates the entry point to your app. We talked about this before. Right here you have UI application main. This is going to be the entry point to our app. Using the UI application main attribute is equivalent to calling the UI application main function and passing your Apple delegate class name as the name of the delegate class. In response, the system creates an application object. The application object is responsible for managing the life cycle of the app. The system also creates the instance, an instance of your Apple Delegate class and assigns it to the application object. So what does all that mean? So you want to think of when you have a class, think of like Instagram, okay? So Instagram, or let's think of something, yeah. I think of something that I actually know about. I don't know a lot about Instagram. Um, let's say Facebook. I know something about Facebook. So we have this Facebook app, an application. When you, when you have that on your phone and um, you actually launch the Facebook app, you've created an instance of that application. Okay, so when I launch it, I create an instance of the Facebook app. When your brother launches it on his phone, he's created an instance. And we all have what we call it, we've created an object. So you have an object, I have an object, your brother has an object. Okay. Each of those objects are going to be different because you've set your Facebook app to have different, um, to work differently than I've set it. For example, you may allow it to show you notifications, but I don't allow it to show notifications. So our instances, um, there's a basic instance of everything, and then we can make it or basic class. The class has all these different things available like set notifications to yes or no. And then depending on who who creates the object, it's going to set those um, things like notifications to, to a yes or a no. The other way you can think about it is if you can think of like um, a car, this is just all object oriented programming. There's there's let's say a Honda Odyssey. A Honda Odyssey is a, is a van and there's a, um, there are car specifications. All cars are created, have, are created the same way. Okay. But I can decide to have a gray car, a gray van, Honda Odyssey. So the class is Honda Odyssey 
my object, my instance of my van is going to be a Honda Odyssey with all the basic things that a Honda Odyssey has, but it's going to be a gray color and somebody else can buy a red one and they have, that's their object. My object is the gray one, their object is the, the, um, the red one. So those are just some basic terms with um, knowing about classes and creating an object and creating an instance of a class. And I'll post a little video that I, um, I found online that just kind of goes over all that so you understand that piece of object-oriented programming, which is really important. Okay, so the Apple Delicate class is automatically created whenever you create a new project. Unless you're doing something highly unusual, you should use this class provided by Xcode to initialize your app and respond to app level events. The app Dele delegate class adopts the UI application delegate protocol right here. This protocol defines a number of methods that you use to set up your app. We kind of looked at this last time, I think, when we were looking at documentation. To respond to the app's state changes and to handle other app level events. The app delegate class contains a single property. There's a single property. It's called UI window or the window property. This property stores a reference to the app's window. This window represents the root of your app's view hierarchy. It is where all of your app content is drawn. Um, note that the window property is an optional, which means it may have no value at some point. So it could be nil. The Apple Delegate class also contains um, implementations of the following methods. It contains implementations of the application method. Application will resign active. Application did enter the background. Application will enter foreground. Did become active. Will terminate. All these methods will basically let the application object communicate with the app delegate. So during an app state transition, for example, when we launch an app, transitioning to the background or an app termination, the application object calls the corresponding delegate method, giving your app an opportunity to respond. You don't need to do anything special to make sure these methods get called at the correct time. The application object handles that job for you. So that's a lot of information. So here are the different methods which we looked at before. Um, we're not going to do anything special, so we're just going to use the regular. We're not going to make any changes to our app delegate Swift file. The next thing we're going to look at is the view controller source file. View controller is right here. The single view application template has this source code called viewcontroller.swift. Remember, it's a source code because it ends in .swift. So you click on it, it shows it to you in the editor window. And this file defines a Costume subclass, it creates a subclass of UI view controller, name view controller. This is a subclass of UI view controller. Okay. Right now, this class simply inherits all of the behaviors defined by UI view controller. So again, you can think of like, let's say, I don't know a lot about cars. But let's say you have, you have a Honda car 
and maybe the Honda Odyssey, maybe there's something, um, there's a class, there's a, a type of car where the Honda Odyssey inherits all of its features, okay? And then adds some more features to be a van, okay? So let's say that it, it the basic Honda car, whatever that is, it's a car, and the Honda Odyssey inherits all of those basic Honda um, car traits, like the motor and whatever else, and then it adds other things to now become a Honda car. It's the same thing that we're talking about here. View controller inherits everything from UI view controller. Um, So one of the things that you see here is override. Override view did load and override did receive memory warning. So this Swift file view controller template is going to override both of these methods. However, the template's sub-implementation doesn't do anything yet, except call the UIViewController version of this method. You can add your own code to customize the ViewController response to these events. So here, once the app loads, you can do whatever you want it to do. And if there's a memory warning, you can do whatever it is you want to do here. We have to implement the code. So the view did load and did receive memory warning are methods that are found in UI view controller. And now this class is going to override whatever this class does. Okay. Hopefully that's not too complicated, but I'm guessing it is if you're new to coding. Okay. So at this point, your viewcontroller.swift code um, looks like this. And you probably don't need this here, so you can actually delete it. <clears throat> We're not going to receive any kind of memory warning. And this is where we're actually going to write some code, OK? So I'm going to stop here and in the next lesson, uh, part two, I'm going to talk about storyboard.